Okay, so in this video, we're going to be using Vil to create a backdoor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do list to list the available tools. And I'm going to use number one because we want to use evasion. And then I'm going to list my payloads. And like I said in the previous lecture, I want to use Go, Meterpreter, Reverse HTTPS. So that's number 15. So I'm going to do use 15. And that's going to list the, first of all, it's going to show me information about this particular payload. And then it will show me the options that I can set for this payload. So the main option that you want to set and the most important one is the IP address. So this is the IP address, which you're going to be receiving the connections on. As we said, we're going to have a reverse connection and we need to set the IP address, which the payload or the backdoor will try to connect back to. And in our case, we want to receive the connection back to this Kali machine. So we're going to set the IP L host to the IP address of the current Kali machine. Now to get the IP of my Kali machine, I have to run if config. So I'm going to split the screen by doing right click and click on split horizontally. And I'm just going to bring this down a bit. And we're going to run if config. Now you can see the IP address in here is 10, 20, 14, 213. This is the IP of my Kali machine. This is the IP of the machine that I'm using as the attacking machine. So this is where I want the connection to come back to so I can hack the target computer once the backdoor is executed. So I'm going to set L host to 10, 20, 14, 213. So you can set any of these options using the set command. So all you have to do is write set followed by the option that you want to change. So in this case, we want to change the L host and we want to change that to 10, 20, 14, 213. Now the L port is set to 80, which is really good because that's the port that's used by web servers. So as I said, the connection will look as if the target person is connecting to a website and it's not going to be suspicious. But I don't want to use that port because I'll have a web server running on this and we'll talk about that later. So I'm going to change that to 8080. 8080 is another port that's used by web servers. So it's still not suspicious and it should still bypass firewalls. So I'm just going to do set. Same way that we did it before with the L host, we're going to do L port to the value that we want to set this option to and we're going to set it to 8080. Now, if I do options again to list all the options, you'll see that the L host changed to 10, 20, 14, 213, and the L port changed to 80, 80. Now, if you generate the backdoor like this, you will bypass all antivirus programs except AVG. I've already tried this. That's how I know this. And that's not good enough because we want to bypass everything. Now, the way antivirus programs work is they have a very large database of signatures. These signatures correspond to files that contain har harmful code. So what they do is they compare the signature of your file, of your backdoor, to all the files in this huge database. If your file matches any of these files, then they'll flag it as a virus or as malware. If it doesn't, then they'll think that it's a normal file and it's not malware. So the main point in here is we're going to try to modify the file, our backdoor as much as possible to make it more unique so that it bypasses the signature database and will be able to bypass antivirus programs. Now, as I said, Vil is already doing that for us. It's encrypting the backdoor, it's obfuscating it, it's injecting it in the memory so that it doesn't get detected. And it's doing a good job at it. It's bypassing pretty much everything except for only one antivirus program. So just to bypass this last antivirus program, I'm going to set some optional options that really won't do much of a difference. They'll just make the backdoor look a bit different. So the first thing that I'm going to modify is processors. And that's the minimum number of processors to be used by the backdoor. I'm not going to set a huge number because that will just make my backdoor not work. I'm just going to set it to one, which is pretty much 
nothing really, but I'm just gonna set this option to make the code look a bit different. So I'm gonna do set. Again, the same way that we are setting the L port and the L host, we're just gonna put the option name, which is processors. And we're gonna set that to number one. And I'm also gonna set another option, which is the sleep option. And that basically lets the backdoor sleep for a number of seconds that you set before it executes the evil code that you have in there, before it executes the payload. So I'm gonna set this to six. Again, no real reason for this. I'm only doing this to make the backdoor look a bit different. So I'm gonna do set sleep to six. So I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm gonna do options again to make sure that all the options are set the way I want them to be. So I have my IP address set properly. I have my L port, I have my processors, and I have my sleep. So I'm gonna generate the backdoor. And now it's asking me to name this backdoor something. So I'm gonna name this backdoor rev HTTPS8080 just so that we can remember which payload and which port to use for this backdoor in the future. Now the backdoor is generated and you can see it's telling us the module that's used and it's telling us where the backdoor is stored. So the backdoor is stored in this path right here. So I'm gonna copy that. Let's go ahead and check to see if the backdoor is detected by any antivirus programs. Now you can use the built-in feature by Vil using the check vt command, but this feature only uses the signature of the file and it's not 100% accurate. Sometimes it tells you that the file will bypass all antiviruses, but it'll actually be detected. You can also use VirusTotal, but I don't recommend that and please don't do that because if you do that, your backdoor will become less effective because VirusTotal share the results of their scans with antivirus programs. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a website called No Distribute. So we're gonna go to it now. So I'm just gonna Google for No Distribute. And what this is gonna do, it's similar to VirusTotal. The only difference is it's not going to share the scan results with antivirus programs. So it won't affect your backdoor. So I'm gonna click on browse to navigate to my file. And I'm just gonna copy where the file is stored. So Vil is telling me now it's stored in this location in user share will output compiled. So I'm gonna copy this. And I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna click on the pen. And I'm gonna paste the location. I'm gonna click on open. And scan the file. Now, as you can see, I've already scanned this file and it's telling me that this file has been scanned before. So I'm just gonna click on view previous results. And as you can see, the file is actually scanned on the same day as today, which is the 29th of March, 2017. And as you can see, the file is bypassing all antivirus programs. So we can use this backdoor against any device and we'll be sure that the device or the computer will not be able to detect this file as a virus. Now there's a few things to keep in mind. Antivirus programs always update their database and they'll always update their code as well. So you want to always make they'll up to date. Also, sometimes with the same exact backdoor, it might get detected and it might not get detected because depending on the way the backdoor is getting encrypted and it's getting generated. I've actually generated this backdoor before with sleep of, with no sleep. And as I said, it got, it got detected by one antivirus program. I generated with 10 seconds and it still got detected. And then with six, it was able to bypass it. So you wanna keep playing around with the options. You wanna keep playing around with the payloads until you manage to achieve the best results so that you can bypass as much antivirus programs as possible.